fans to the animation experience at Conservation Station. Since the 1930s, Disney animators have put their pencils to paper in service of the idea that the greatest inspiration often comes from the magic of nature. Walt Disney himself understood the importance of spending time around animals, studying their behavior and personalities in order to create realistic characters and dynamic storylines. This meeting of the human and animal worlds sparked a legacy of storytelling that has shaped our relationship with animals and conservation forever. Today, we invite you to become a part of that legacy as our own Disney artists help you learn to sketch characters inspired by the very animals found here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. Get your pencils ready because here comes our animation artist now. All right, hello everybody! Welcome to Animation Experience. My name is Brian. And today we're going to be drawing Copper from the Fox and the Hound. Ah. <laughs> Great response. <laughs> yes, I, I know a lot of you just previously drew Todd, so you're getting a matching pair. Nice work. Um, before we get started, um, Let's see, if you guys need anything at all during the class, it's pencil breaks. If you let more spontaneously combust. Um, if you have easily frustrated children or equally easily frustrated adults who just need pulling sheets or crayons, just raise your hand when our friends around the room, probably Heather, will be here to help you guys out. If you guys need an exit, that's a really easy one. That's where the exit sign is. Mm -hmm. Try not to make it too hard for you. So if everybody seems to want to go that way and tuck and roll and make ropes and things, don't do that. Just go where the action sign is, and that's also where the restrooms are. And I'd like to thank all of you, well, most of you are, are still wearing your facial coverings properly. Fantastic. There's some of you that just need to pull them up over the noses while you're inside the building. Fantastic. Most of you have learned something over the last year. That's good. And a lot of things have changed uh, where you get to walk around without them outside, which is great. But as long as you're inside the building, so you just have to keep them on. And since you have to keep those on, there's no eating or drinking inside of the theater. And even when these things go away, there still won't be eating or drinking inside of the theater. It's just a thing that always has been and always will be, probably. Um, now, we're doing a whole character set on babies. You guys love babies? Yeah. Two of you love babies, or else you're like, meh, babies. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah. Um, and that's why we're doing characters like Todd and Copper and Bambi and Thumper and Grogu. Because um, we're doing babies. And Walt used to bring live animals in the studio for his animators to work from, so he started that with Bambi. That way, people would have more real, their animators would have more realistic animations and actually be able to look at the actual animals. No longer were they having deer folding clothes and doing laundry, they wanted more realistic animations. And as much as I would love to just, you know, let a bloodhound blood like walk through all of you right now so you can see what's up close and personal, we're not going to do that. Instead, we've got a lovely video that shows you a whole bunch of lovely babies for you to uh, fawn after. So uh, take a look at your experience to run your left for some inspiration. A baby meerkat is a playful kit. A little seahorse is a floating fry. A beetle, a wiggly grub. When you think of a hatchling, you may think of something like this. But since a hatchling comes from an egg, it can also be a reptile, amphibian, or fish. When you hear colt, you may think that is a baby zebra name. Strangely enough, it can also be a chick of a crowned crane. And if that's not confusing enough, this short, stocky rhino is a calf. And so is the six foot tall baby giraffe. Luckily, these two, called piglets, look similar, both with pivoty snouts. The baby warthogs excitedly running tails in the air, and baby red river hogs wallowing without a care. Whether they come as one or as many, covered with fur, scales, skin or feathers of plenty, whatever you call them, no matter the name, we will care for each of them deeply, just the same. Oh, 
You guys feel inspired? Yeah. Awesome. And speaking of baby zebras, we had one born yesterday on the safari. So if you happen to be right around the safari yesterday, you may have seen a baby zebra be born in front of everyone. <laughs> it's pretty cool. All right. Uh, now, you guys are all using golf pencils. The golf pencils generally do not have erasers on them, so just keep your lines light and sketchy. We're going to go from light to dark pretty quickly, so just do your best to follow along with me. Um, if you're one of those people who makes one bad line and your entire world comes crashing down around you and you start to have a mental breakdown, I know you're out there. Don't worry about it, because guess what? Outside of this building, erasers still exist. It's true, <laughs> they do, they're still out there. So if you make a bad line, just draw a good line over the top of it, next to it, wherever you need to put that line to make yourself feel better, and then eventually, at some point in your life, you will probably come across an eraser, and if you still care, you can go back and erase the things you didn't like on this drawing. Sound good? Yes. To anyone? Yes. All right, fantastic. Let's get going. We are drawing Copper, who is a bloodhound. He's a hound dog. Um, in the book that the movie was based on, he's actually half coon hound and half bloodhound. He's a hound mix. All right. And I'm running into something. There we go. Okay. So we've got a nice little circle up here, which is actually a little bit ovally, but you probably can't tell this by looking at it. It's a little weird tilt to it. And we've got this kind of half oval at the bottom. We're gonna find our two horizontal guidelines right up here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by drawing kind of an S curve or a hook. It's gonna start just to the left of the center guideline up here on the on that blue guideline. I'm gonna draw a curve that's gonna drop down and it's going to pass through this line right here and just run right into this curve. So it's kind of a trailing hook shape, but it's got the same sort of back and forth motion as an S to it. So we call it an S curve. Okay, I'll go back over that. Over on the right hand side, we're just going to do it again, but the opposite direction. This is going to drop down and you can run directly into this curve. You may not be able to visualize it yet, but these curves are its cheeks. So we're just gonna run right into that cheek over on the right hand side. Just kind of flowing down. Now we're gonna go just to the inside of that hook shape at the top and draw a curve which is gonna drop down to the blue guideline and then kind of curve over just outside of our circle. So once we hit this blue guideline, we get this slight curve right here, which is actually the uh, top of his cheek being pushed up, the bottom of the eye. It looks sort of like he's got a bird on a wire. Are you guys gonna see that? No? Well, for one moment, you'll see it a little bit better. So once you get this, and we can actually draw the curve on the blue guideline, that really looks more like it's a bird on a wire. like that. And this film just came out in 1981. The 24th Disney animated film. And just doing the same thing on this side. Then a curve out and connect it up on that blue guy. Another bird on a wire. Young Copper here was uh, voiced by the legendary Corey Feldman. Why, you may ask? Because it was the 80s. <laughs> All right, so we've got two birds just staring at each other, staring at each other from a wire. So on the inside of these little bird shapes that we made right there, we're going to draw an oval and uh, think like an egg shape. It's going to lean against the bottom of this little curve right there. I'm going to go up and just kind of fill in the gap in between those sides. So we get this little oval in there. And I'm just going to go over it a few times when I'm happy with it. I'll start to darken the lines. Now on the top of his eye, he has an eyelid and eyelashes. And for that, because he's wide-eyed, we're just going to thicken up the top curve of that oval.
I'm going to get the same thing over here. Just get another oval in there. Filling in that space. Just like so. I mentioned Corey Feldman was, was uh, cover when he was young. As the movie progresses, of course, the characters get older. And adult copper was voiced by Kurt Russell. All right, now, inside of those ovals, we're gonna draw more ovals. Hope you guys love ovals. Any oval lovers out there? No? No? You guys are all very subdued. You guys all right? You guys doing okay? Anybody taking this way too seriously? Yes. Like concentrating so hard that you've like lost the ability to use your vocal cords and move your arms? Yes. Yeah, that happens sometimes. I see that a lot. Um, you gotta treat this like it's the first day of kindergarten. Not like you're presenting your doctoral thesis. Just take a deep breath, let it out, just relax and realize you're just at Disney having fun. This isn't anything serious. Just enjoy yourselves. No one's going to pop out of the bushes behind me and yell, you're hired, and then buy your $24 million house in California and get you a job in animation. It's just not going to happen, guys. Sorry, that was last Wednesday. You missed it. Yeah. All right, I'm going to draw another oval on the inside. Not to say that that couldn't happen, but you're probably going to need to practice a little bit more than drawing just one picture of copper. Just saying. I'm going to put another little oval in there, and an oval over here. Once again, you're feeling out your lines as you're going around, making sure it's the shape that you like, and then when you're happy with it, you're just going to put a little bit of pressure on your pencil and darken the shape that you like. Or that you can live with, at least for the moment. We can add a glimmer of light to the inside of his pupils. It's just the light reflecting off of the pupil. It just gives him some light. It means the sun exists in his world or at least a light source or a lamp. And we're gonna shade in around that glimmer of light to get the pupil. All right. This version of Topper is a puppy. And I'm sure you all know this, but puppy comes from the, uh, the French word poupé. I'm sure I butchered that. Any French people in here that know the actual word? No, no one? Yes. Um, which actually means means doll or toy. So that's uh, where the word puppy comes from. But like I said, I'm sure you all know that already. It's just common knowledge, right? Yeah. Once again, you guys are a rough crowd. You guys need to like stop for a second, go out and like drink, get some coffee or something, or? Eat a whole bunch of sugar real quick? No? Okay. <laughs> Is anybody having a good time? Because to me right now, you're all very subdued. Almost like you're all paralyzed in fear. All right, we got a few of you. <laughs> all right. Now, he's a hound dog. Hound dogs are wrinkly. Very, very wrinkly. And we're going to draw the top wrinkles that kind of appear like eyebrows. He uses them like eyebrows so he can show, show motions with it. So I'm just going to draw a curve across the top, about halfway between the top of the circle and this guideline. I'm going to run all the way over just inside of the circle and curve down. And then I'm going to follow that same curve that we drew right here. And then I'm going to run into the side of the cheek. So we get this big, kind of stretched out eyebrow curve. One of the rare animals that actually look like they have eyebrows, just because of all the wrinkles. Over on the right hand side, we get the same kind of thing. This one's going to curve up and all the way over to the side of the circle. Why it's different? Well, because he's not symmetrical. As you can tell from the center guideline, it's curved slightly, which means his head is just slightly turned to the right. So you don't have to be too tough on yourself if it doesn't look exactly the same on each side. I'm going to follow down the circle, then I'm going to curve out and run into the side of the cheek. And we get these big, wrinkly eyebrows. 
like so. Now, on the left hand side, I'm going to draw another wrinkle. It's going to curve up almost to the top of the circle, but it's going to stay just inside the circle. It's going to drop down, running through this blue guideline, so we get this little curve like a little hill peeking up at the top. That's going to curve back up all the way over to the side of the circle, and then follow that circle, so you're just tracing over the circle, running back into that first wrinkle that you drew. But the wrinkles aren't done yet. We're going to draw another one just inside of the circle on the right hand side. It's going to run up to the circle. It's going to curve down. And back up to the circle on the other side. So we get this little dip. And then this one's going to just trace over the circle and stop at that top of the guideline. And then we're just going to trace over the very top of the circle to give us the actual top of his head. All right. So now we've got the top of Cock. Now we're going to work on his muzzle, his snout. And for that, we start on the blue guideline that the eyes are sitting on. I'm going to draw a little slight curve. Now we're going to, he's actually smiling and pushing his cheeks up. This is the top of that cheek, so that means the bottom of it has to be directly below it. So we get this little curve that's almost as if he could pinch his cheeks. See? It helps you draw better if you make sound effects. No takers on that one? Oh. Alright, we're going to go over to the right hand side and do the same thing. Once again, directly below that cheek, so it's all one piece, one cheek muscle. Like so. And we can draw his nose. We're actually going to start at the bottom of our circle. I'm just going to draw a little curve coming from one side to the other, leaving a gap between that and the snout above it. We're going to draw a rounded off triangle. So this is going to drop down about halfway between the circle and the bottom of this, of this oval right there. And just create this triangle, a rounded off triangle. Just like that. And that's just the bottom of the nose. The top, to add a little bit of dimension, I'm going to draw a line up from either side, curving in towards the blue guideline, and then curving across the top like there's a rectangle on the top of it. And that just gives them a little bit of dimension. Now, this film was one of the first times they actually tried using some computer animation uh, in a film as well. Use that for one of the scenes with the uh, the Model T. Yeah. All right, there's the nose. You're gonna shade in the bottom part of that nose, Just like so, and we're gonna leave the top as if the light's reflecting off of it. A few notable things about this film as well. Anybody know who Tim Burton is? Yeah, three of you know who Tim Burton is. All right, fantastic. Tim Burton worked as an animator on this film before getting fired. <laughs> <laughs> and then quickly brought back after he was successful. And they're like, hey, you, we need you back in this company again. Um, but yes, he actually worked as an animator on this film. And he animated the character of Vixie, who was the female fox at the end of the film. That was, that was Tim Burton's. And that's how we got started as well, as, a, as, a, as an animator. All right, now we're going to draw the bottom part of his muzzle, where his mouth is at. And we're going to go over to the cheek right here, which is the corners of his mouth. And I'm going to draw a curve that's going to drop down, and then curve over and run into that circle. So we get this, looks like if you look at that part, it's like a weird bent letter T. And we can do the same thing on this side. Drop down and then curve into the circle. Straight down below the nose, 
I'm just going to create this little, like a tiny little mountain. So you can have a little bottom right there, like a little triangle. And then I'm going to connect it to the mouth. And that gives us his mouth. You know, some little dots on there for kind of whisker spots. Three of them on each side. All right, then what we're going to do is we can go down to this blue guideline. And I'm just going to kind of round this off a little bit. This is where his chin is at. I'm going to pull this line up so it looks like kind of a squared off letter U. It's just going to curve up and then over and run into that blue guideline. And we do that on both sides with the whole squared off letter U thing I was talking about. Get this stretched out, squared off letter E. I'm tracing back over my cheeks now. Now, his mouth is open. He doesn't have a weird chin. Um, we're going to go from right about where the top of the mouth touches the blue guideline and just draw a parallel line to the squared off U so it becomes his bottom lip. Just like that. Now inside of his mouth, he's got a tongue. And we're going to go up towards the, towards the blue guideline. This is going up with a curve. And another curve right behind it. And then you can actually just fill in the inside of the mouth and the tongue. And the top of the mouth there. Nice and dark in there. This film was also notable for the uh, last time that uh, Frank and Ollie, two Disney legends, worked together as storymen on this film. Not really in the animation department for this film, but they worked together as storymen for the last time. Uh, story. You see Frank and Ollie on the wall over there to your right, two of the nine old men. Nine old men, of course, were the team of Disney animators that uh, kind of figured everything out for everyone else. They're the pioneers of the animated film. And when they were called the Nine Old Men, they were all in their 20s and 30s. Yeah, it was a play on the words, because at the time, the Supreme Court was called the Nine Old Men, so they were like, well, these are Walt's Nine Old Men. Yeah. All right, last but not least, ears. He's got big, long, fluffy ears. He's a hound dog, after all. So we go over to the right-hand side, right where we left off with this line. And we've got these blue guidelines at the very bottom of our paper. So I'm going to draw a curve very, very lightly. It's going to drop down and then angle in towards that blue guideline. If we go straight down from the corner of the mouth, right here, down to the bottom of the face, we pick that up and then curve in again, almost like it looks like a tie. Notice how I kept that light. We've got to draw some folds in there. We can do the same thing over here. I'm going to start just above the blue guideline on this side, though. Yeah. And curve out, and then angle inwards towards that blue guideline from the corner of the mouth, drop down, come to kind of a roundabout point at the bottom, okay. like a necktie. Now we're going to curve this out a little bit at the attachment up at the top. I'm going to draw just a little, almost like a question mark at the top right there, curving down. This, if you fold this behind his cheek, will pop out right here and we get just a little hole in the ear. I'm going to follow it to the left hand side and curve in to create another fold in the ear. He's very floppy. Then from there, I'm going to curve back out again, go back over the bottom of the ear, and all the way up. Folds. On the right hand side, 
I'm going to go just below the blue guideline and draw a little curve so we see some space, a gap between the ear and the head there. This can follow through just behind the cheek, come out right there for another fold in the ear. Same kind of thing, we'll follow this in, curve it in a little bit on the right. From there, curve up, and finish off the ear. Yeah, if you've never seen Fox and the Hound, it was the, uh, the first Disney animated film of the 1980s. It still holds up. You can see it, of course, on Disney Plus. We've got that. Also been available on home video for as long as home video has existed. All right, last but not least, because we don't want just a floating head, we're going to show that his body is over here just by drawing a couple little wrinkles to show where his body is at. He does not wear a collar as a puppy. He does as an adult. He stays on the farm as a puppy. But he doesn't have a collar. So there's Copper. You guys just threw Copper. How do you feel? All right. Fantastic. Be proud of what you've done and sign your drawing. So everybody knows whose masterpiece this is. Now we do draw a different character in every class. We have nine characters in nine classes. If you want to get really good at any one of them, like if you want to be really good at drawing copper, come back tomorrow, find out we're drawing copper again, and draw another copper class. And the more that you draw the same thing over and over again, the better you're going to get at it. That is just called practice. Now we're going to put a date on the drawing as well, because that's also very, very important. Today is the 18th of May. We put dates on our drawings as artists so that we can actually track our progress from year to year, from drawing to drawing, from technique to technique. It really helps us grow as an artist because we can actually see how we're improving. A lot of times, you just, sometimes you just don't think you are, but you are. And I did not start drawing until I was the ripe old age of two. But it wasn't until I was 10 years old that I actually started putting dates on my drawings. And so I've got eight years worth of drawings in there where I have no idea how old I was when I drew them. But man, would I love to know. So, let this be a lesson for you. Take this advice, put a date on your drawing. You'll thank me later. All right, as you can look over at the, uh, as you're finishing up, you can look over at the pictures on the wall, those black and white pictures. As I mentioned, Frank and Ollie before, they're over there busily working, with uh, Frank working on uh, Tramp, the Lady of the Tramp over there, Ollie working on uh, Blue for the Jungle Book. They're both legends, there's a great documentary about them, called Frank and Ollie on Disney Plus. And the two of them actually together literally wrote a book on animation called The Illusion of Life. It's a beautiful, huge copy table book that's full of Disney artwork. It just came back to the print a little while ago, so I highly recommend that. Um, Brenna Scott, the first female Disney animator, where Blair the first, uh, well, she was a Disney animator as well. Uh, she created, it's a small world, so I'm not sure how you really feel about it, uh, but she did a lot of design work on movies for us, like uh, Alice in Wonderland. And Peter Pan and Cinderella. And then there's a guy over there, Walt Disney. He's using a laptop just like you. He's looking at deer for Bambi. He's drawing those deer. He's using them as inspiration. All of them are using animals as inspiration for their drawings, just like you did. You guys are now part of that same Disney legacy. So give yourselves a round of applause. And thanks so much for drawing with me, guys. In just a few seconds, you're going to hear a voice moving down from the heavens, dismissing you from this class. Now, normally, back in the good old days, that would be your cue to get up and leave. However, these are not the good old days. No. These are what they call the unprecedented times. <laughs> and in these unprecedented times, what we need you guys to do is, well, to be physically distant. So as soon as you hear that voice dismissing you from the class, what I want you guys to do is nothing. Just stay where you're at. Don't go anywhere. Well, as I've got at least one friend over there, just a few friends, and I've got a head over there as well. Uh, one of my friends over there is going to come and dismiss you by your group, group by group. Um, while you're waiting for them to get to you, check your area, make sure you pick up all of your stuff. Don't leave coffee cups or water bottles or backpacks or purses behind. Um, check and make sure you have the number one thing that everyone leaves in this class, their cell phones. 
Yeah, the most expensive thing you have on you, everybody leaves them in here. They just fall off on from the floor, or people just set them down at their feet. You're like, just check right now and make sure that you have your cell phones on you before you leave the room. I'll move on back to the left board. The left board's going to go to those black buckets over there. You'll notice the ones that are in the buckets are all handled up. We need you to do the same for us. That's the hole on the top. Just grab it, pick it up, put it down like you're filing a briefcase. Um, so that's the handle. The clips are not the handle. Don't grab it by the foot, just snaps the clips off. We don't want you to break our boards. Please don't break our boards. And just put them in there, handle up, and make it easier for us to clean them. Those pencils! Those are yours! Congratulations! We can't take them back! Uh, so take them, bronze them, turn them into jewelry so you can always remember this day. Or you can just drop them in those blue buckets over there and say pencil recycling, and we'll turn them into mulch and spread them all across the property in your name. And those papers, that's your beautiful artwork. Cherish it, put it on a refrigerator somewhere, whether it's yours or Home Depot's. And thanks again, guys. Have a wonderful rest of your adventure here at Animal Kingdom. Bye bye, everybody. Thank you all for joining us in the animation experience at Conservation Station. Please gather your personal belongings before exiting, and remember to take your artwork with you. We hope you enjoy the rest of your visit at Rafiki's Planet Watch, and the rest of your adventure here at Disney's Animal Kingdom.